Spin. Hi, we're the Cinderella family. I'm Debbie. I'm Joe. We have four children. Rebecca, seven. It's hard to sleep. Sarah, six. Anna's three. And Joshua's one and a half. I'm a stay-at-home mom. One, two, three. I'm a police officer. I work four days on, four days off. That's why you're here. If Joe's not home, I'm praying and counting every minute until he gets home. <laughs> Being a police officer, you're able to get the public, they pretty much follow what you say. And then when you come home, your kids just don't want to listen to you. No. Sit. <laughs> sit. Sit back. No, you're not getting it, and that's it. Why would you do that? Just sit. <laughs> no. Oh, my God. <laughs> Hold on a minute. That's just put earplugs in. They're going to spend the rest of the day in the room. Oh, Hannah. <laughs> get in that bed. <laughs> Stop that. Get in that bed now. This is getting ridiculous. There was a few times with Hannah, we were out of the store and we were shopping, and I turned around and she was actually putting a pair of sunglasses in her pocketbook that she bought into the store. Here, your husband's a cop. It's a little embarrassing that, you know, your child's stealing. I did not pay for that. You cannot steal. Ah, I think we've got a little girl with sticky fingers here. Rebecca is pretty much bouncing up and down, bouncing around other people. Stop. Very hard to control. Control yourself. OK, I will. OK, I will. Sarah is very <laughs> set in her ways. When she doesn't want to do something, it ain't going to get done. You better get that laundry. <laughs> I'm not. I want you to get up there now. How come Mom's laughing? <laughs> You're silly. Joshua, he's just, he's our brute. His parents are clearly overwhelmed. The kids pretty much just run a three-ring circus around me. I'm not smiling. Get in that bed now. I'm not kidding. I'm not smiling. Yes, you are. <laughs> oh, this is a joke. Get in that bed. <laughs> Super Nanny, we need your help. I just don't know what to do anymore. It's not fun anymore. This is our last resort. We have no other way to go. This family's in a right pickle. I'm on my way. Give me that, Josh. Hello. Hello. Pleased to meet you. So nice to meet you. Thank you so much. <laughs> When Joe first walked in the door, I was so excited. I was really relieved. I was glad she was there. I couldn't wait to get started. Me too. Hi. This is Rebecca. Hi, Rebecca. Pleased to meet you. I'm Joe. How are you? I was honestly afraid of just that she would see that we weren't being good parents, which I know Debbie and I try to be. So uh, what's easier, being out on the streets and keeping uh, everybody in check or, or trying to do it in your own home? I think being out on the streets and keeping, really? keeping the public in check is usually a little easier. Watch the screen. The first errand was a trip to the drugstore, which was absolutely perfect because it gave me a chance to see how Mum dealt with the children out in public. Hannah, come on. <laughs> Hannah. Hannah, please stop. <laughs> Beckelin. Hannah, come on. Oh, Josh. Hannah. Get over here now. Becca, come on. No, Josh. Girls, please don't touch the cards. I've got enough to deal with your brother. Beck, Sarah, Hannah, whoever you are, don't touch that. Stop it now. No, leave her alone. Leave her alone. The most obvious thing was how fluttered Mum became when she was with her children out in public. She really started to panic. I can't breathe. You can't breathe. <laughs> This is panic for you? Yes. Because <laughs> they're like all over. I don't even know where Becca went. There is no control whatsoever. There's nothing that even resonates with mum in feeling confident about being a mother and having four kids and taking them out in public. Did you take anything? <coughs> you promise? I have to check her pockets and stuff to make sure that she didn't get anything. 
kind of got sticky fingers. I think a lot of kids have probably done that, you know, very innocently walked into a shop and taken something and feel that, hey, it's OK. And you know, I think it's important that really this family teach Hannah that it's wrong to steal. I told you to watch your brother. Now look at that. Let's go. Let's go. I've had it. I've had it. What a palaver. Just to go into a shop and buy a few things. That was, like, unbelievable. I'm, like, I'm exhausted. In the afternoon, the kids were playing out in the backyard, and Mum wanted to bring Josh in so she could keep an eye on him while she did some cooking. But little Josh had bigger plans. Come on, Joshua. <coughs> oh. <laughs> Come on. No, Joshua. No. Come on. <laughs> She's given him very strict direction. Come to mummy, we want to go upstairs. She starts to laugh. <laughs> and then she plays peekaboo with him and she starts to run around the table. It's like, how does he take her seriously? Quite frankly, I've never seen a mum laugh so hysterically over her kids' bad behaviour. She obviously deals with it like this when she becomes overwhelmed. <laughs> Somehow she manages to get Joshua into the kitchen, she drags him across the floor, and he ends up in that high chair strapped in. And he is screaming, screaming and screaming. He doesn't want to be there. <laughs> needs to keep an eye on the little one, but at the same time, she needs to give him some space so that he can play and have some fun, otherwise he'll get bored and make a fuss. I don't know what else to do. <laughs> it's, like, really overwhelming. <laughs> right. Later that afternoon, the kids were still playing in the backyard, which gave me an opportunity to talk to Mum about the challenges that she has to deal with. You know, four kids, do you find that overwhelming? I do. You know, I'm the youngest of five. I never had somebody to care for. And my husband also was the youngest of three, and he never had to care for anybody, so we just don't know what to do. I do have to tell you, Joe, it's very embarrassing. <laughs> I used to have a quiet, wonderful, happy, do bunch of things kind of house, and I don't. And I guess that's why I feel like I'm on the outside looking in, because it's not what it used to be. Let's eat. After my chat with Mum, Dad came home shortly from enforcing the law, and it gave me a good chance to see exactly how much law Dad puts down at that dining table when it's meal time. This is a fork. That's what you just eat, not your fingers. Stop. Put your leg down there now. The children don't excuse themselves from the table. They just get up. Why don't you come sit down? Are you done eating? Yeah. Once again, by myself. Proper family meal times should be a part of this family's organised routine because when it's not, it leads to a load of misbehaviour and discipline issues. <laughs> come on, your brother's sleeping. <laughs> Stop. 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 Now you're going to sit here, Teague, if you can't share. You hear me? Sit there. Dad's discipline is ineffective. He placed Hannah into time out and then continued to talk to her. That's not the correct way to do it. Stop it. Stop. You're being dead. You're making it worse. Stop. You're not going. No. You're not getting it until you sit down. Don't hit me. You know better than that. Dad's a police officer, and he's increasingly becoming frustrated with the fact that his own children don't have any respect for him or listen to him at all. It's not funny. Stay here, me. Stop it. <laughs> the reason why the kids don't listen to Dad it's because when he puts them into time out, he continues to have a conversation with them. Ready for bed? 
Hey. We're just kidding. You're right, Good night. So, bedtime rolled around, and I'd seen enough and knew exactly what needed to be said and done in this house. Sleep well, the pair of you. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. <laughs> I've had a really good day of observation, though. Yes. A really great day. I've been able to see a lot, so I do need to sit down and speak to you both tomorrow morning. Okay. So, I look forward to seeing you then. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Good night. You too. They have called me in to help them, but I hope they realise that I'm not coming with a bag of fairy dust. It's going to take a lot of commitment to change things in this house, so I hope they're ready, because I'm going to be kicking it up a notch. It's well needed. We're in big trouble. <laughs> Wait a second, let me rephrase that. I'm in big trouble. <laughs> it is obvious that the pair of you love your children a lot, that you care about how you raise them. But the irony in this situation is that, Joe, you spend time on the streets reinforcing the law, and yet, in your own home, that's not being reinforced. Why is it so hard to give it to your own kids, Joe? Just, you know, I don't want to be the bad father or the dad who doesn't have fun or anything like that. Deb, how are your kids going to take you seriously if when you discipline them, you laugh at them? How do I stop laughing? It's... Well, you recognise. Don't use it as an excuse, Deb. It's not cutting it here at the table, OK? You recognise that if I don't stop laughing and use a firmer voice that's going to exercise my authority, then these kids are going to realise that it's all a big joke. And that, to me, is absolutely crazy. <laughs> You're in cuckoo land. <laughs> no, no, I want you to stop laughing for a minute, OK? I don't want the humour at this table right now. If you want your kids to respect you, then there's got to be a point where you're serious. Or your kids are just going to run amok and you're not going to be in control. <sighs> Let's talk about stealing. Your little one goes into a shop, takes something, and then realises it's OK to do that and do that again. That's a problem. We pay for things. At home, it's ours. But you haven't said that. And, Joe, you're a cop and you've got your own kids stealing. If anything, I'd have thought it would have come from you first. Where's the consequence? Uh. Earplugs, Joe. I use them on occasion. Shut yourself off. I don't know, I get a lot of headaches from the noise, <laughs> and that's why I put the earplugs in. I would like to see no earplugs anymore. As the father of this house, you have a chance to be a very encouraging, supportive, loving father. But at the moment, I think I'm staring at somebody who thinks they can't do it. Am I right? <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> but I know you can do it. Because if you couldn't, you won't be doing the job you're doing now. <laughs> Just overwhelming. So we deal with it or we don't deal with it? We deal with it. Mm -hmm. We try or, or do we change We this? change because I don't do try. <laughs> Hello. Hi. Hello. Hi. <laughs> One concern I've got is that there's no structure, so I want to be able to go in and first put a routine in this household from the time the kids wake up to the time they go to bed. Deborah, you come over here because you're going to do the writing. He's better off doing the writing. <laughs> Deb obviously had issues with me creating a new routine for her family because she fought me on every detail. Joe's sleeping. Yeah. What's the big deal about the kids being still in bed? What's the thing? Well, there? they stay asleep. Nobody gets up then until quarter to nine, is that right? 8.45? Nine o'clock. Right, that's too late. That's too late. Really? Yeah, it's too late because you want Josh to be able to have a good morning where he's stimulated, he's got play. We want to fit in the snack time, we want to fit in the lunch. See, I really want to cut out snack altogether. Why? I don't think it's healthy for the kids to have snack. They need snack, otherwise their blood sugar so. levels drop. If I give them breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and they have their snack exactly after their meal, it lets them sit down and eat their meal properly versus they're grazing all day. I plan on making changes, but I never saw myself making excuses. I really didn't. The girls can sit down and have breakfast by themselves. Yes, but I'm okay. not going to cook it twice. Why? 
Why should I have to cook breakfast twice? Why do you cook breakfast all the time? So that I have to cook lunch twice, dinner twice, everything twice? Now why, why do you feel like you need to do even a cooked breakfast? How are just cereals you? and fruit? Because they don't settle for cereal. They want the waffles, the pancakes, the... Only if you run in Deborah's cafe in the morning. <laughs> Arguing over every point, finding an excuse for everything. Well, I don't want them to go to school a and say and that I didn't feed elsewhere. them breakfast. I gave them a bunch of Will you of stop fruit? worrying about the rest of America and concentrate on your family? Stop arguing. This is so immature. <laughs> Let's focus on what we're here to do. It's going to be difficult for me to help Deb if she's not willing to receive my help. So we've got Josh having that nap and then at 2.30, pick kids up from school. Snack. Oh, Another cool. snack? Correct. They would You're have kidding only had me, one. Right? They would have only had one. Right. Snack again. <laughs> oh my God. There's always been a routine in my head of what, what I have to get done during the day. I, I just may have not have let the kids know what that is. Eight o'clock shower. The girls. Eight o'clock shower and eight thirty bedtime. I like that. Kids are in bed. Hey, just do what you want. Uh, Mom. I don't think the issue is snacks, cooking, or getting up early. I think it's Deb not wanting to take direction. She's still fighting on every level. Even Dad's noticed. Yeah. All right, let's have that up. After the resistance that Deb gave me on the routine, it's going to be really telling to see how she responds to implementing discipline. Sarah, you just kicked me. Now stop. What do I do with this? Sarah, stop. Sarah, stop it. Like, Look I don't at her. know what to do. Look at her in the face. Sarah, stop. <laughs> Mum laughs when anything becomes overwhelming for her. And if she's to change this, then she's gonna have to get through this challenge. Okay. Don't laugh, it's not funny, stop. You're right. No, stop. <laughs> Look at me, stop. It's harder for me to break the laugh because it's of embarrassment of how I'm disciplining them. And it's like, ah, as it's coming out. So as soon as something happens, stop. Sarah, stop it. Now give her a warning. Give her a warning. Low tone voice. Sarah, come here, please. Come here. Stand up, please. Stop that behavior right now. Okay. Okay? Any more nonsense like that, and you'll be doing time. Do you understand me? Straight away, you'll be in that corner. Okay. Okay. So, you didn't see me laughing, did you? No. Huh? No. Mum was still being so combative. So I needed just to have a straight, blunt talk with her. So I asked the kids to leave so that I could have a one-on-one. -on -one. You asked me to come into your house, OK, and help you. Yes. OK? You gave me a 100 reasons why things weren't working. OK. OK? It's not cutting anymore. If you want results and if you want change, then you accept that you're doing things wrong. I am, but okay, I don't think no, it's Okay, no, stop. Laziness. I'm talking, please. It's not knowing. Do not play with me an attitude of not knowing anything. You made a decision to have four kids. You have not shown me any responsibility or accountability for what has happened in this house. You are an immature woman who needs to grow up. And if you don't like what I'm saying, then you better get used to it. Because let me tell you something, Deb, if I need to give you military boot camp, that's what I'm gonna do. Let's start fresh here, OK? You are lazy. There are things about you that are lazy. I don't believe that. Get over it. Get That's over it. That's not laziness. Deb, get over it. By lazy, I mean lazy. L-A-Z-Y. Mum's not willing to admit that she's wrong and there are things that need to change. Your mind is so warped and negative. You are so quick to disable yourself in so many ways that you, you're not even willing to take the blinkers off. But what I will not tolerate from you is an attitude that everything's perfect, OK, and that I'm not lazy. You are lazy. <laughs> you are lazy. There's no two ways about that. Those kids are what I care about. I do too. That's then start life. showing it. I do. Then start showing it. If you didn't need my help, I wouldn't be here. So admit that you need the help. I do And need allow the help. me to come in. 
bring down the wall and get in touch with reality here, Deb. It's as simple as that. So if you want to fight with yourself, then you fight with yourself. I'm not here to fight. I'm here to work out solutions that are going to make you happier as a mother. You either want that or you don't. I do want that. Right. Then let's go. Who wants to play shots? Do you want to play shots, Mummy? Yes, thank you. Okay, me. okay. After a stiff talk with Deb, I was pleased to see that she was on board because we had to teach Hannah all about stealing and how wrong it was. So this is our supermarket. Okay, so where do our tins go in the uh, supermarket? Up there. Okay. As soon as we started to improvise, I could see that Deb's attitude started to change. So I think the stiff talk did some good and now we can start to make some real progress. And innocently, she feels that she can just take it and it's okay. okay. But we need to teach her that it's wrong to do that. And we're going to do that by teaching her exactly what we do in, in the real world, in the adult world, and how we pay for things. Hannah was the shopper, and I was the cashier, and Joe was the shop owner. We gave Hannah some money and a little basket so she could put some food in it and take it to the cashier. We have... A Tomato. Hannah was a little confused at first. Excuse me, we need to pay for these first. Excuse me, did you throw something in there that we didn't pay for? The apple. <gasps> My word, excuse we, me, madam. We need to pay for the apple first. Yeah. Excuse right. me, shall I call the manager? That's stealing. That is stealing. We had to set a firm example, but one that would be fun so that she would remember and know that stealing is wrong. Are you going to pay for it? Yeah. All right, OK. It looks like you owe $5. Yeah. <laughs> yes! She loved it. She had so much fun with it. This was a great technique to teach Hannah not to steal. You have a nice day, ma'am. So long. You're a good little shopper. So you paid all of this with money? Yeah. Hannah got it. She she understood that mommy can't give you that until I physically pay for it with money. When we're in the supermarket or in the shops and we pick things up, we have to pay for them. Because, because if we just take them and we don't pay for them, it's stealing. That's a really bad thing to do. Would you like to have a go at being the cashier now? Yeah. Okay, and mommy do the shopping? Yeah. Okay, let's do that. After teaching Hannah that stealing is wrong, I recognised that Mr Policeman himself was having a hard job reinforcing rules in his own home. Now you're not getting... No, no. No, what? Sit. Sit here for not listening for the fifth time. Sit. Sit. Let's go. Put the ball away. Sit there till I tell you to get up or you're not going to do anything for the rest of the day. You're standing up, and now you're not going to ride your bike. No, Sit. No, nope, you're done. No, you're not riding your no. bike. No. I, want to ride I don't care. No. Until you sit there quietly, you're not getting out. So sit there quietly. Stop kicking the door. Sarah was putting up a fight, so I took Dad to the side to teach him how to teach Sarah that he meant business. What you're doing is you're feeding into all of that. She's sitting there doing time, No, she's misbehaving, and now she can draw everyone to her situation. I love my kids, but I gotta have the ability to lay down some rules. If you don't rise above it... Hi, Daddy. ...then it won't change. Hi, Daddy. So now what do you do if she just keeps running out here? You ignore and put her back. I mean, Joe was doing well, but I want to be able to teach him how to discipline without saying a word. <laughs> Kind of the hardest part is just sticking with the discipline thing and trying to get them to stay in the corner and not get too frustrated and uh, give up on it. Your time was up, wasn't it? Yes. So you should follow through because then she knows that you're doing this technique. You know why you're sitting here? Because Dad is learning how to stand up for himself and discipline correctly. And the more he follows through and is consistent, the more his kids are going to start to listen to him and respect him. Come on. Go. With the techniques in place, it's time for me to leave and to see exactly how well they do without me. I am leaving for a couple of days. All right, but but know this, I am going to be watching. Okay. You know the drill, and I'll see you on my return. Thank you. Okay. Take care. Take care. It's going to be interesting.
to see exactly how well the Citarella family do on their own because we do still have a lot of teaching to do. After a few days without me, I'm really excited to see how well they've done with the kids. Hello. Hello. So, who's ready to take a look at some of this footage? Ready. We're ready. OK, the first clip that we're going to see... I didn't say to go in. I expect you girls to stay by the stroller. Do not touch anything off of these shelves. Do you understand me? If you don't behave, you won't go to soccer. Sarah, if you don't behave, you won't go, you won't have computer time later either. Mommy, I paid, I paid. Four and a half, Mommy, I paid. five. Fine. Why are you paying for this stuff? Why aren't we just walking out the door? Why are we paying? Because why? What would that be if we just walked out the door with it? Right, right. So we're going to pay. That's a good thing. <laughs> because that's what we wanted. We wanted Hannah paying. That's fantastic. Very good, clear expectations. What I would ask you to do, though, is just to um, be a little bit softer. OK. With your tone. You know, it's a matter of fact, you're just setting up expectations. Okay. All right, so more of your everyday voice. <laughs> Don't talk with your mouth full, please. Mommy! Okay, love it. I know what they <laughs> Finish it. Don't spit it out. So she's like this and you're still feeding her. Because that's acceptable, right? No. That's okay. No, it is though. No, it's not. But it is. It is for you. You set that standard. We were Paraview. playing during that time. Playing? Yeah. So l let's just recap on that. How do you feel when you go to a restaurant and your kids are behaving like that? How do you feel? Embarrassed. Embarrassed. So have we got room for that then, Play. No. You set no standards. You've got no etiquette at the table. Just like you as parents need guidance and direction, your kids need to be taught also. Kids don't come born with a chip in their brain already and know what to do. So I can see why you're embarrassed. So is that something we want changed? Absolutely. So the next clip we are going to see here, Joe, is all about you doing time out. How are you getting on with doing time here? Yes, they went pretty well, so... OK, let's take a look at this. Come on. That's yeah, where you're going for not listening for the fifth time today. Let's go. <laughs> Tired of you ignoring me and doing what you want. Now sit here until I tell you to move. Staying there for being fresh. You lost it. It's not funny at all. Stop it. I do it. Sit on your butt the way you're supposed to sit. What do you see? When you watch this, Joe, what do you see? You might have talked to her too much while she was there. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Which means you're not doing the technique properly. Right. You have a wonderful family, and I've seen some really good stuff here. There are things that do need to be polished up in here, OK? And I don't want to leave until they are polished up. Are we happy to do that? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Are we ready to just embrace life and, and recognise that, <laughs> that we're here and our family come first? Yes. Yeah, OK, let's do that then. The first item of business was to turn the tables completely around on Dad so that when we went out on a car trip, I would break out my own earplugs. So, refresh my memory with these car journeys with you and the kids in the car. I had seen in submission Dad placing earplugs in when the kids started to play up in the back of the car. Not only is this highly dangerous and could lead to an accident, but this is about a dad who's zoning out because he doesn't want to address what his girls are doing in the back. So today I thought I would show him by using his own example. You know, when would this normally happen? Pretty much any time we went on a longer, a long drive. Sorry? Any time we went on a long drive or 
pretty much any time we went on a drive at all. The main reason these girls kick off is because they want to have a conversation with their dad. If he gets rid of these earplugs, then he'll allow himself to have a two-way conversation with them, and logically, they're going to behave better. Like Becca, Rebecca and Sarah. Did you say Rebecca? Rebecca. Rebecca? No? I'm trying to look at your lips. Yeah, Re that? Rebecca. Sorry, did you say something? Sorry, did you say... Oh, that's better. Did you say something? When I looked in the mirror and saw that she had actually put the earplugs in, it, it was funny. Well, well, these things are good, but I can't hear a damn thing. <laughs> I think he got the message very quickly. And as I hoped, Dad's conversation with the girls, music to my ears. Your teacher wasn't there today? She's very nice. Is she really? Why? Definitely without the earplugs, it makes life easier for the girls to be able to ask questions and me to be able to answer them, so. Well, let's see what mommy has playing. Wow, you wouldn't have heard that with earplugs on. <laughs> <laughs> and the final step forward was to trash those earplugs. <laughs> <laughs> let's just hope that's the last of the earplugs that we'll see again. After teaching Dad to be more hands-on with the kids, it was time to give this family a test. Before I arrived, dinner times would be mayhem, so I wanted to set a challenge for this family to go out and eat in a restaurant. This is your creative flower arrangement that is going to sit in the middle of your table for a good while until your children learn good table manners. It was very evident that these parents hadn't sat in their own house at the dining table implementing good manners. As you'll see, each flower has a message. Use your silverware to eat. Play with toys, not your food. So today, what we are going to do is to take our flower arrangement and we're going to take it out. We're going to take it to the restaurant, we're going to place it on the table, we're going to look over our bouquet of flowers and we're going to implement these rules on the fly. Joe's face looked a picture. Oh, my word. Are you kidding me? We're going to a restaurant. But, uh, you know, we rounded up the kids and off we went. Sit down. Yeah. Sit. Yeah. Sit down. Yeah. Sit down. Yeah. Sit down. Yeah. Sit down. Yeah. Josh decided that he didn't want to sit in his high chair and he kicked off this complete meltdown and I thought, well, you know what? We're staying here. Yeah. Uh, he's having a temper tantrum because you're telling him to do it. But you know that he peeks and then he lets go. I've seen this a hundred times before. You just keep with it and then the child realises. Sit down and eat. This is all my fault. I'm his mother and I felt responsible for his meltdown. Sit down. No! What is he learning right now? That every time he screams like that, you pick him up. So what do you think he's going to continue to do? Scream like that? Exactly! For some parents, it can be highly embarrassing when you're in a restaurant and your kid is screaming down the house. But if you don't learn to stick with it and push through, then you'll never go out to a restaurant and enjoy yourself. Now he knows he's got to scream for double the time before you hold him again. Instead of following through, you did the easier thing, and that was to hold him. You just think it's never going to end and nothing's going to work, and at that point you want to just get up and leave and, you know, just go home and eat. OK, so the difference between what we're seeing here is actually Joe's interacting with him. He's talking, he's asking him if he wants a few things. You know, rather than trying to console him, he's actually just interacting and talking with him. After Josh calmed down a bit, I was able to get back to the task at hand and teach these kids some table manners. Get your elbows off the table, hey, Sarah. Oh, dear, we need to put that big flower in front of you. Huh? Please. Daddy, you pour me some lemonade, please. The quickest way to teach your kids table manners is to lead by example. And yes, that does include how to use your silverware. Look at Mommy's hands. Do this, put your finger there, put your knife like this, and you hold the chicken and you cut with the knife. And what does the fork do? The fork holds the chicken, and then this. Now that clear expectations have been laid down for the kids at mealtimes, if they just follow through, there's no reason why this family won't be able to go out again and dine in peace. I'm really pleased to see that. Well done. 
jabs. And you, Sarah, keep your elbows off the table, though, love. But good job for using your napkin. This wasn't a bad first go. <laughs> it was just awesome. I was able to sit at the table for the first time and eat with my family. I will see you back at the house. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. See you later. I want a big hug because Jojo's going home now. Hannah, can I grab a big hug? A big hug. I think my family is better now that Jojo came. Bye, Sarah, darling. Mwah. There's no doubt in my mind. I'm completely confident that what I've been able to give this family, they can use. Oh, oh. wow, look, I go home with all these lovely pictures. <laughs> oh, that's adorable. No, I just hope that they they find it in themselves to realise that they deserve to move forward and be in a better place. Give me a big hug, all you girls, give me a big <laughs> hug. Bye-bye, bye-bye. Joe helped us in areas that I really needed the most help in. Thank you. You're welcome. Take care of yourself. Definitely a blessing that Joe came at this time. I mean, it couldn't have worked out any better. Take care. All right. Hey, doing time. <laughs> Focus on that doing time. We know that it's going to be a, a process to work on. It's going to take some time, but as long as we stick with it, it should work. Bye-bye. 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 When I first met Deb, she laughed at absolutely everything. And now she realises there's a time and a place for laughter, but not when it's about discipline. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yay! We're off to the party. I think definitely since this process, we've become a better family. Just It's easier to go out and do things, and uh, I think it's just going to get even better as we build on it. I think that things will be much easier now. Uh, I definitely think I'll be a better dad, just knowing what to do with the kids and just getting them to listen. Come on, sir. And just to make the home life, you know, that much better. Snailer. <laughs> you know, just Joe having the confidence and control over the children and knowing that he can handle all four by himself, that's huge for me. Thank you, Joe. My mom and dad are better parents because of all JoJo's help. Thanks, JoJo.